I just played a very interesting game with a bolt boy army that is essentially a multiple small unit, also known as MSU, uh, bolt boy army. And it went in so incredibly well that I wanted to make a quick video and show you this list, talk about how it works, and get your reaction to it. And of course, my name is Moss, and let's check out this bolt boy list. So you can see from just this setup here that you're playing a lot of three unit bolt boy groups. This list is playing eight. So I'm playing I'm playing a lot of bolt boys in big yellers. Uh, I'm running two snatcher bosses, a one merc knob, one gobsprack for that counter magic, and jaws. So if I wanted to so let's look over the list in more detail before we uh, really uh, look talk about it more. So we're big yellers. So what's important to remember here is that all of our units are visible out, uh, outside of 12. Like we're visible just like everybody else. So you have to pay attention to that. Um, however, the Merc knob can't be targeted outside of 12 as long as he's close to a unit of Bolt Boys. It has to be a unit of Bolt Boys. So positionally, that can be quite difficult in this list. So you'll have to decide how much you value your Merc knob. Um, so uh, our grand strategy is Wa, so that's either our general or a battle line unit, so that's going to be incredibly easy. We just have to get our bolt boys across the map, which is what we're going to be trying to do anyway. So we have two uh, snatch bosses, the first one being obviously the general with super sneaky. The super sneaky target is going to be either gobsprack. You can super sneak, if, if an opponent is trying to hide their casters in the back, um, like outside of 30, you can just super sneaky gobsprack uh, out onto the map behind something so that he's within uh, unbind range for you know at least two casts. Uh, that's really that's really good. Another good super sneaky target is actually the killbow, taking the killbow and, and moving it so it's 27 inches, right? Big yellers, 27 inches away from some monster is another really good super sneaky. You're not really deploying far forward. You're just like okay. Another, uh, you can also try to put them on an objective, right? Which can be really nice. You could also do the same thing with the 27 inch range of three bull boys where you just take them, put, plop them on an objective somewhere and uh, you know maybe into a position where you think you're gonna be moving so you can get some turn one shots off. But those are all, those are all really good super sneaky targets, very defensive. Um, and that you'll see that play out in this, um, in this list, right? It's interesting, very interesting. And then Gobsprack. Gobsprack is going to use all of our primal dice. I've said this before. I'll say it again. And lots of people are saying it everywhere, and I, I, I uh, fully agree. Gobsprack is this is the this is the season for Gobsprack. If you don't have one, get one. This is the season. Um, we're also going to play a Merc knob. You'll see here that the Sludge Raker has an Arcane Tome. So this is from the uh, uh, Warlord Battalion that we're taking, and then a whole bunch of Bolt Boys, a Killbow, and Jaws. So for our battalions, we're taking Warlord. You can either take... Um, I, I like Arcane Tome. Uh, it's just another like unbind. You could throw some Primal Dice at it if you needed to. Uh, I think... I'm not making... I'm not wrong. No. I, I think... pretty sure you can do that. You might want to double check. I'm pretty sure you can. Um, but he just doesn't get any spells. I'm pretty sure you can throw a Primal Dice at him. And... Uh, uh, and Cruel Boy Finger. So you get this just from some Cruel Boy units, and uh, it's another um, magnificent once per game extra command point. So between Warlord and Cruel Boy Finger, we're getting two of these command points. It's, it's awesome. Usually at the beginning of round two and the beginning of round three. So some variations of the list. So a Jaws can easily just be traded out for a second Merc Knob. The problem with the Merc Knob in the list is that if you, if you want them to stay within three of a unit of bull boys a unit of bull boys is going to have to sort of commit to being close and if you have a second merc knob oops if you have a second merc knob it's going to help uh keep um like that 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 cover on everybody so it depends on what the meta looks like for you at your local uh gaming establishment but if you, again if you want them to be invisible they're going to have to stay within three of a unit of bull boys so positionally it can be quite quite tricky also from what I understand, Merc Knob, Belchabana ability stack. 
So this gives all of your really juicy targets here in the middle a double. Uh, is it four up or five up spell ignore? I can't remember, but a, a, like a nice spell ignore. So again, the, the, the changing out um, the jaws for a Merc Knob is going to be a question of uh, like local meta and how much uh, magic is coming through because Gobsprack is going to do a pretty good job already with unbinding uh, spells that are going to annoy you. So the second Merc Knob, in, in my view, is a little bit redundant as long as you're sort of keeping the Merc Knob in a position to like, you know, keep the big guys safe or keep whatever it is that you think is important safe. I think it's fine. If people want to target him and shoot him off, it's not the end of the world either. He can play more aggressive at the forefront, right? Or he can sort of sit back. Um, but I think that Jaws is better. Jaws with Gobsprack is great because Gobsprack... So you're, again, you're not using your Primal Dice for this. You're going to use your Primal Dice for Unbinds primarily. But uh, the Jaws makes Arcane Tome good on the Snatch Boss. And also Gobsprack... It's a nice little combo. It's a little bit tricky to pull off uh, in Crow Boys, but you can super sneaky in, cast Jaws, and then move back. So that's a nice little thing, right? It's like you sort of jump off to the flank, throw a Jaws at something that you think you know you want to kill, like some little foot hero or something, and then or a screen or whatever it is, and then you can jump back uh, in, in the movement phase without really any repercussions. So that's really nice. Uh, let's keep looking at the list. So uh, you can also take um, instead of taking. The Warlord Artifact Arcane Tome. You can instead take the Mount art uh, Trait Weirden on the other Sludge Raker. So one has Fasten, one has Weirden. Just a quick reminder or refresher, Weirden is another... I think it's mortal. It's a ward against mortal wounds. Um, I think... I'm just going to double check. Uh, Weirden. Uh, four up ward against mortal wounds caused by spells and the abilities of endless spells. So if people are, are picking on you with uh, spells and endless spells, right? It's like, oh, shit. You know, uh, four up spell ignore? Oh, no, I fail. Okay, well, four up ward against all the mortal wounds you're going to cause me. So, seems good, right? Like, you're going to protect yourself. I really like that ability. Uh, some more variations. You can also trade one unit of bolt boys for a Nash Tooth, or you could trade two units of bolt boys for two Nash Teeth. You could do that. You could also do... A bolt boy and a kill a bow becomes a vulture because it's exactly 200 points. So you could, for example, if you wanted to get rid of a unit of bolt boys and in comes a Nash Tooth. So your army could look something more like this where you have a little uh, flanker um, who can run up to the side. Nash Tooth is great. He doesn't eat a lot of uh, command points, right? It sort of generates his own. I feel like two, like look at this list. This is a big yellers list. Look how many little uh, bolt boys we have even even though I just cut two it's like we still are just like bolt boying it up everywhere like it's great um, or you could replace uh, what was the other one uh, oh, I can't remember now right one unit of bolt boys and the kill bow for a uh, vulture right so let's get rid of these so let's just see what that looks like so I mean like this I probably wouldn't run the double but I would probably run a um, like a single Nash Tooth. I think that that could be pretty good, right? He's off on the flank. He's doing his own thing. 120 points. Like he's so fast. He's really going to help grab territory. So you could run seven units, um, but I don't think that running six is going to be the way to do it. I think that six is probably too few. So instead of this Nash Tooth, you could go back up to eight Bolt Boys. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and instead get rid of the Kill Bow and here, and then throw in. A kill a boss on Vulture. I personally think that more bull boys is better, and I'll talk about that in a sec. But one of the big reasons is because you are not invisible outside of twelve anymore. You're not invisible outside of twelve anymore. So if you put like a big monster up here, like Gobsprack is going to want to sit in the back at twenty nine point whatever inches, you know, and uh, the the uh, Snatcher bosses are going to have to move up. But um, it's an option. Like it's worth considering if the kill bow is going to be really bad for you. Uh, in your meta, if you feel like, you know, that extra monster is going to be helpful. Um, you could definitely do that, because you're meeting your battle line requirements like crazy. So, that's really cool. So, we've looked at uh, the list, the way that I like to run it. We've looked at um, uh, we've looked at some variations in the artifacts and the enhancements and everything. You, you get a sense about how you want to deploy, right? Like, you sort of, like, you can easily sort of understand and see how it is that you're going to want to set up your units in this castle uh, formation. So the last thing I wanted to talk about was uh, play style, like how you're actually going to play this. 
the real big benefit that this list has is it has no gut rippers and hobgrads. It has no gut rippers and hobgrads. It also has no swamp collar shamans. The swamp collar shamans are at their best standing beside bull boys that are in larger groups. Obviously, the more models that you have in a unit, if you apply a buff to that unit, it's more cost effective. So because we're running no gut ribbons and no hobgrots, and we're running all of these bull boys in little three man squads, the swamp call shamans just get removed and we use two sludge rakers instead uh, to cover, make sure we're covering lots of ground. Every single unit of bull boys, because they're in big yellers, is gonna have a, um, their hasty shot is 15 inches. It's a 15 inch range for a hasty shot. And with a five inch move, it's a 20 inch range for a hasty shot. So all of our little units are just going to keep moving up the board. We're just going to keep moving up the board. We're going to we're going to take objectives, um, and any single unit of bull boys is entirely disposable. They're entirely disposable, and we're just going to keep moving forward. We're going to keep moving forward. You know what? I mean the the second Merc knob is actually quite nice. Not going to lie, it's nice being able to. Uh, it's nice being able to have the double spell ignore. Like you can really split up into two sort of chunks, and you just sort of you just keep moving forward. And the ones in the in the front might do aim shot, and the ones in the back are just running. But then it's like you suddenly it's like you get charged and you use one unit of bolt boys because they maybe redeploy forward into your opponent, and you know suddenly it's like oh I lost three bolt boys. Like okay, I didn't lose six. If you make contact with my bull boys, they're going to die. If there's six, if there's nine, sometimes it feels like it doesn't matter. You lose a lot, and then the Battleshock phase comes, and you lose even more. And we're a command point hungry army, right? It, it feels bad. But being able to throw bull boys at your opponent and be more aggressive in general with them, it feels pretty strong. And then Gobsprack is just here to do the, the, the anti-magic thing. So, I mean... The list is, uh, it's interesting. It's really different. It's, it was fun to play. And I think you should give it a try and let me know what you think. This might be a good list. I think this is definitely a legitimate play style uh, this season. And just in general, I feel like it's, uh, it's pretty strong. It felt pretty strong. I played a game against Mega Gargans and I, I, I lost, but I lost as a player. Not because my list was bad. I, I, I uh, spread my damage out too thinly. Um, because this list, the way that it's going to do its damage is it's going to, it's going to kind of pepper everything. You're going to shoot the bolt boys at what you can sh hit, right? So as your squads are moving up, different squads are going to be able to hit different things. You're just going to throw dice. Another interesting thing is that this has eight champions. In my normal list, there's two. So I'm actually going to throw six more dice in this list. I'm going to throw six more dice. I don't get the fives from the shamans, but every six, every venom encrusted weapon is a uh, three mortal wounds because you're going to be within a sludge raker or no matter where you are. So for haste, you know, let's say that everything shoots with an aim shot. So it's four times eight shots. It's 32 shots. It's 32 shots. So, uh, you know, from mortal wounds, you're expecting something like 16 mortal wounds a turn with aimed shots, right? And double that with hasty shot. Like, it, it can pump it out. It it trades a lot better than a lot of other Cruel Boy armies that I've played lately. It trades better. You can get charged from any direction, and it's okay. Whatever charge is into you is going to get hasty shotted. It's going to get hasty shotted. And then for your wah, right, you're going to try to, like, converge or something and try to get Gobsprack and Snatcher Boss. You have a fast and then you have a, a sneaky miasma. So if you're smart, you can set up your uh, wah uh, by uh, fast ending something and then uh, Gobsprack can sneaky miasma a Snatcher Boss and then run in with his 14-inch movement and be on top of stuff. So it's actually a pretty, it's pretty, uh, it's pretty nasty wah. It's a pretty nasty wah if you can get it off. So that's great. So... Let me know what you think in the comments below. Tell me what your favorite variation of, of this list is. Have you actually played an MSU-style Bull Boys list? I'd be super curious to know. 
in our Discord right now. We are ch trying to uh, keep track of some games that we're playing with some different lists in this meta because obviously there's a lot of different matchups. So we're trying to like you know uh, see what's going on and see what is going to be good this season. Obviously, there's a lot more to figure out. We're not going to figure it out you know in the first week or whatever. So uh, you should come by, say hi. Until then, like, subscribe.